Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This video is being shot in Surabaya, Indonesia because I've been invited here for the weekend to DJ at an event. And I know it's really random, but on a whim, I decided to bring a whole bunch of my spinners over here. So you can see I've got my whole Pelican case and I've got this carrying this around with me. So generally when I get invited overseas, I usually have a couple of free days. And so for this particular trip, I decided that during one of the free days, which is today, I would do up this video for you guys because it's been you know in the pipeline of my plans for a long time and this video is about how to choose your first spinner or possibly even your next spinner maybe the next two or next three so basically this video is targeted to people who are new to spinners who are looking to get into spinners or generally just you know got your first spinner and you not sure if you want to get a next one or which one you should get for your next of course for you veteran spinner enthusiasts if you still want to stay and watch this video please by all means go ahead all right at the same time i want to say a big thank you to all the viewers of my channel so far especially the spinner videos because you guys have actually commented quite a lot and a lot of you have been leaving comments saying things like hey you should review this spinner or you should review that spinner could you do a review of this particular spinner because i want to know what you think about it things like that and i think that the reason why people are asking these questions is because they're not sure what to look out for on a spinner the next most common question generally is i have 50 dollars what can i buy for 50 bucks or i have 100 dollars what's the best i can get for 100 bucks so I decided that I would make this video and try to give you guys more information and kind of teach you what to look out for on a spinner from my perspective and what are things I look for when I make a spinner purchase. At this time of the video, I want to say that I will not be putting any links to any particular website or any sales page because I want to keep this really fair. This is meant to be an informative video. So I will put links to the resources that I actually refer to, not the sales pages. So that one, I'll leave it to you guys to go find out and decide on your own, okay? I I have a few main categories and under main categories I also have subcategories so let's start with the main categories first we have price points what are you using the spinner for what is your primary function of the spinner choosing your spinner other factors and last but not least the bottom line and the resources so that's the structure of this video I will be putting some text here and there so it's easier for you to kind of remember or it's easier for you to look through the list as I speak about it so the first main category that I'm going to talk about is the price points and uh, please Forgive me if I keep looking here in the video because my computer is right here and I have my whole list and structure written down. Let's go. So under the price points, I have a few subcategories and the first subcategory is the budget category. And under budget, we have things like the under $10 category, the under $30 category, or the under $50 category. Now in this category, generally you'll find a lot of mass produced spinners or maybe in certain cases lower quality spinners and i'm talking about things like very simple designs or lower grade metals things like that but it's not limited to just that i'll talk about it when i'm done with this category moving on to the next tier which is the mid tier category and for me any spinner within the 50 dollars to 100 dollars range falls under the mid tier category now these spinners are where you start to see something with a bit more craftsmanship in it better machining work uh, higher grade metals and maybe in some cases combination of different metals as well and uh, you get nicer buttons and you get better bearings things like that then we move on into the mid upper tier which is anything between a hundred dollars to 150 dollars the spinners in this tier are spinners that are relatively hard to get hard to procure because maybe they are made in limited runs, maybe because they have a long wait list, maybe because they have very unique selling points, maybe they are made of higher grade metals. It, it could be anything or it could be also reputation of the company or how precisely they are made, things like that. Then you have the upper tier. So the upper tier is a huge range from anything between $150 and up and you can get some really crazy prices for really amazing looking spinners like for example the metal wand spinners or maybe even the pepiaka spinners or like the chris bathgate spinner or spinners made of exotic metals such as damascus steel or damascus steel mokutai mokum things like that so first of all before you make a purchase of course you have to identify what is your budget and what you're willing to spend on a spinner now i mentioned that there are some special cases and i'm just gonna call them the chinese manufactured spinners now without any discrimination come on i'm asian i'm chinese filipino so no discrimination here but you could easily get a pretty good spinner for say under 30 dollars or under 50 dollars for example the dapper by kepler technology is under 30 dollars and it spins damn well solid 
metal spins them well. 188 spinner. Or for example, the Spinetics line. This is the Y and it spins them well. But at the same time, for all of these, the spin characteristics will probably be the same because they kind of feel the same when they spin, even though it is a bar spinner versus a tri spinner. If you do not move them around, you probably won't even be able to tell that they are a different spinner. They kind of feel the same in the spinning in hand. Now I know you don't need me to give you examples of this, so let's move on to the next main category, which is the what are you using the spinner for category. And what I mean is, are you looking to get a spinner just to fidget around with? Are you using it to perform tricks and practice playing tricks and stuff? Are you a collector? So knowing that as well, it would help you decide. Because if you are a collector, you want to get the higher end stuff, you want to get the limited stuff, or you want to get things that are more handmade versus being machined or mass produced. If you're looking to get a fidgeter, then almost any spinner would work fine. So it doesn't really depend on price range anymore. But if you're looking, for example, to play tricks, then you want a spinner that is well manufactured, that is very, very well balanced. You want something that has a nicer button, for example, a bigger button because it's easier to catch when you're throwing it in the air. So that would also help shape your spinner choice. Moving on to the next main category, and it goes hand in hand with the previous one, which is what is the primary function of your spinner? Do you want just a fidget spinner? Do you want it to be just looking cool? Or do you want a long spinner? I know that nowadays there are a lot of spinners that are relatively affordable and they look relatively cool, but they also spin very long. So they kind of are like sitting on the fence in between being a fidget spinner and a long spinner. But if you're looking for a fidget spinner, then you want something that is really comfortable in hand, something that doesn't have sharp edges, something that is rounded everywhere. So now for long spinners, I'm gonna just categorize it and say any spinner that spins for more than six minutes and above, and I'm talking about two-handed spins. So, you know, spinners like your, your Grave Raven, AKA Binary Fusion, um, your Stubbies, your One Drop, your Yost Trilliums, things like that. Since we're talking about long spinners, let's talk about the design of spinners so that it will help you identify what kind of spinners are designed to be long spinners. Let's look at the GP1, for example. The GP1 is a pretty uniform shaped spinner. You can see it because it's just uniform generally all the way. It looks like a solid rectangle, right? So this is meant to be a fidget spinner. It would not spin long because for long spins, generally basic physics is that you want weights that are further out from the center and you want to have your weight concentration on the outside. This as you can see is pretty uniform in terms of the weight distribution all the way throughout. So it is not meant to be a long spinner, but it is a good fidget spinner. This for example is not a long spinner as well because of the design. So what makes a long spinner? For example, the stubby. Now I'm gonna remove the buttons and explain this to you because buttons don't play a part in terms of whether or not the spinner is a long spinner. So for those of you that don't know, the original stubby is a 188 bearing spinner. I mean, there are a lot of clones out there, so I kind of refer to this as an original stubby. But okay, let's just call it a stubby. But if you look at the design of the stubby, note how the weights are actually going outwards like this. They taper out and not only on just this axis, but on this axis as well. You can see that it tapers outwards. So this design basically pushes all the weight outwards in all directions from the center, which is the bearing. And I learned this great information by watching Fabian's video. So I'm definitely gonna plug his YouTube channel later on because it's a great resource and has some great references in there. So when you get a spinner design like this with weights on the outside, the further they are and the more tapered outwards they are, it's gonna be a longer spinner. That's the main theory behind the design. So when you look at a spinner like the Zik, for example, the Hollow Zik, this doesn't qualify as a long spinner design because it doesn't taper out from the middle, you know, and these don't taper outwards as well, they taper inwards. And even though there's a thicker metal bar over here, the overall weight distribution is relatively even. So it's not gonna be a really long spinner. Yeah, it gets three minute spins, sometimes four, but you know, it's not a six minute plus spinner. When you look at spinners like this, for example, the Y, you can actually have the basic idea of trying to push the weight outwards, but then it tapers over here because of the design. But when you look at it this way, from the core, ignore the buttons, and it goes out, you can see that the weight is being thrown outwards. So the Y easily gets four, five minute spins easily. So if you look at spinners like the Grave Raven spinner, or if you look at the Trillium spinners, you'll notice that from the core, it spreads really thin out and then it goes really big 
and concentrates all the weights on the outside. Those are traits of long spinner design. So if you're looking for a long spinner, look out for designs like that. But if you're looking for a fitted spinner, then you want something that is comfortable. Comfortable like, for example, the Troika is one of the most comfortable spinners I've ever handled, simply because it may be narrow, but it's really rounded off on the edges everywhere. Yes, it's made of plastic, but it has a nice textured finish as well. So it feels good to hold and it's not too big. It is light, one of the lightest spinners I own. And because of all this round edges over here, it doesn't really hurt your fingers at all. And it feels very comfortable to just flick around with. Another comfortable spinner, once again, is the Stubby because there are chamfers on the edges. And when you look at chamfers like these, of a nice angle, they're not gonna hurt. Especially the Stubby because it's, it's kind of like sanded or rounded off as well. So it's really comfortable. Stubby is one of the more comfortable spinners I have as well. On the other hand, when you have chamfers like this, for some reason, chamfers on the Maelstrom actually feel kind of painful. When you look at it, it looks more like two hard edges rather than a proper chamfer. So this is actually not a really comfortable spinner. But if you look at, say for example, the Hyperstone and the Spinstar, the Hyperstone is very nicely chamfered here to a point that it feels rounded. Same thing goes for the spin star. These are really comfortable spinners that make really wonderful fidget spinners. So these are the kind of nuances you want to look out for when you're getting a fidget spinner. One more thing I want to point out in terms of comfort is whether or not your spinner design has knurls like these. These knurls may cause some discomfort, even though, say for example, it could be rounded, but as long as it's a knurl, it might cause discomfort. For example, one unfortunate case, and apart from that, it would be one of the best spinners around, is the dapper. Dapper looks good, and you have these slots over here. And on closer inspection, these corners where the slots are cut out, is actually really sharp. And it's unfortunate because your finger lands on it all the time to want to spin, start a spin or stop it. So if you don't round these off some way, it ends up being really uncomfortable to the point that it, you might get cuts. So it's just things for you to take note of when you're looking to get a fidget spinner. You want something really rounded, really comfortable. Now before I end this section about the primary function of the spinner, I also want to say that bearing types play a big part. Bearing types meaning what is the bearing that the spinner is using. Is it a 608 bearing, a 688 bearing, a 188 bearing, a 606 bearing? There's so many bearings that are being used right now. For example, the Hyperstone is a 696 bearing. But generally, most spinners nowadays are actually using the 188 size bearing. And it's a wonderful size bearing because it's small. And when you make a frame around it, generally you want bigger weights on the outside. So it helps to keep the spinner design smaller but at the same time have traits of being a long spinner. So that's also the reason why a lot of spinners see good solid three, four minute spin times nowadays. And that's why I consider long spinners to be six minutes and up. There are also bearing adapters nowadays, which are widely known as the cores that actually convert your 688 size spinners into 188 bearing spinners. And I won't be talking about that now. I'll be doing an entire video on it in the future. So stay tuned for that. Now that we've covered the first few main categories, let's go into the next main category, which is the actual thought process that I go through when choosing a spinner. So this is a thought process that I will share with you because it might help you choose your spinner. First of all, the things that I look at is material of the spinner. Is it 3D printed? And if it is, I'm not knocking 3D printed spinners, but what kind of filament is being used? Is it PLA, SLA, what is the infill? Is it wood filament or is it metal filament? Things like that. Could it be made of plastic, like injection molded plastic or like ABS? Could it be made of aluminium or brass or copper, stainless steel, titanium, tungsten carbide, exotic metals such as Damascus steel, Moktai. And some spinners are actually also made of more than one material. For example, these guys, stainless steel and brass. Knowing the material of the spinner will also help you make your decision. For example, I personally don't like brass or copper. I just don't like the way it patinas. I don't like the smell of it. And also because my skin reacts to patina, I get a little bit itchy and a little bit red when I handle patina. So that really drives my choices down by a bit. And personally, I like stainless steel more than any other metal because like personally, I like titanium as a metal, but not for spinners. I think it's too light for spinners. And all of that also adds up to helping you decide on your next spinner purchase. Moving forward from the material of it, let's talk about shapes. 
Now we have many, many shapes now in the market because it's getting more and more diverse with more and more people designing spinners. So we'll start from the bottom and just keep going all the way. The most basic spinner, I should say, the most basic two are the bar style and the tri style. So bar spinner typically is just like this, two arms. In some cases, when people look at, for example, the dapper or the bow tie by United Machining, People actually say these are bow tie shaped spinners. Yes, they are bow tie shaped spinners. But if you look at, say for example, a top bar, a top bar is a peanut shaped spinner. Let's just say that. But essentially it is made of two arms. So that's why it's known more commonly as a bar style spinner. So bar style spinners. And then you have the tri spinners, which are typically like this. This is actually a very generic design, even though it's a Troika. A lot of bearing wrap, bearing wrap meaning that you actually use 608 bearings for your weights. Bearing wrap designs are tri-style spinners, anything that looks relatively like this in a shape of letter Y, hence the spinetic Y. These are all tri-style spinners. Then you have triangle shaped spinners like the Delta Core, for example. It is a triangle shaped spinner. And you also have disc shaped spinners that I don't carry around because personally, I don't like disc shaped spinners. Disc shaped like the Mr. DJ or any of the cog style spinners. Yeah, they're all just disc shaped or circular shaped spinners. Then we have the hybrid shaped spinners. Like for example, the Axis Micro. The Axis Micro falls under both a triangle spinner as well as a tri spinner because of its design. Or for example, the Pi Spinner by Spinetics. It looks like a disc shaped spinner, but at the same time, it is made of three arms. So it's also a tri spinner or even the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom essentially looks like a tri spinner, but it's also a disc shaped spinner, for example. Even this guy, it's a bar spinner, but also a disc shaped spinner at the same time. So we have all these crazy designs coming up that I would just categorize as a hybrid shaped spinner. Then we have the odd shaped spinners, which are spinners that consist of, say, for example, four arms, five arms, six arms, seven, eight, or what have you. So those are the odd shaped spinners. And last but not least, there is another category of spinners known as the ring spinners. And I will not be talking about the ring spinners because I don't own any of them. I've never handled a ring spinner. And at the same time, I don't really see the allure of it. Like if I have a ring, I want to be able to wear it. But in my opinion, in, in my mind, ring spinners force you to spin a spinner either like this or like this or like this versus hand spinners where you can actually have it here in your pocket or down low or you know just around somewhere so that's my personal opinion and i won't be talking about ring spinners because this video is more for hand spinners yeah so last but not least we have other factors other factors are like for example what else comes along with the spinner is there a pouch is there a cleaning cloth do they provide extra buttons do they provide you with a spare bearing do they have a tool for you to unscrew your spinner if you want to remove anything if there's any removable parts things like that and also, the next thing you want to care about is looks versus comfort. That is one more of the other factors category, looks versus comfort. Sometimes the spinner just looks so good, but it might feel like shit. For example, this. I think the end spinner looks so good, but it's a really bad fidget spinner. In my opinion, I just don't like spinning this guy. I just like to put him right there and look at him. <laughs> I don't even want to... I don't even want to, oh, I just snag myself again. What the hell? Damn it, I'm spinning on the wrong side, you see? So, in terms of playing with this guy, I don't really get a satisfaction because knowing that if I screw up or if I slip up and I pull really hard and I get snagged, I know I'm gonna hurt myself really bad. So I have this fear while handling it and I'm not able to give it a satisfying pull. See, but it just looks so good to me. So that is also a really huge factor. The bottom line of it is what? do you value for example some people look at spinners and say oh the machining value is beautiful like my friend yong chang he really appreciates machining standards he's able to look at a spinner and say oh you know this part is actually really hard to machine or it's really hard to get this finish or it's really hard to cut out this particular slot here and there so for a person like him he really values machining and of course high quality machining means more time spent on a spinner, more effort required, and also less numbers produced at the same time. So those are gonna be definitely higher end or higher priced spinners. Really, like I said, it depends on what you value. For example, 
the GP1. It's made of basically four parts. Let's just call it four. Because you have two side plates, one core plate, and you have the bearing. If you want to add the buttons and the screws, of course, there's more parts. But basically, you have spinners like this, or the fidget, for example, that are all screwed in together and you kind of assemble it into one piece. Personally, I don't like spinners like this. I don't like to, you know, like have different parts put together because I have a fear that they might drop out and I don't like protruding screws, things like that. But I actually do like, for example, the metal jacket where it's machined one piece of brass first and then you have these four outer jackets that you can actually slip on or you could pry off if you lodge a screwdriver right here and you kind of yank it outwards just come right off you know so it's it's like it's still very nicely made and very well thought out so personally i like one piece solid spinners like things like this the arm shark you know it's going to take a lot of time to do all these details over here and get all these nails down for example this this has a lot of attention paid to the detail in it and you can see all the diagonal lines the dots you know all these these grooves and, and all these nerves here and there, I think this is actually very well manufactured even though it's mass manufactured. And some people really, really value the characteristic of a handmade spinner. For example, the Spinning Magic Thruster. These are all handmade. And I really mean handmade, like there's no automation going on. He has to go to his milling machine or his lathing machine and he'll have to do all that stuff. And then he will hand finish it. He will round the corners. He will also press the weights in by himself. He presses the bearings in by himself. He turns these buttons. So to reiterate again, the bottom line is, what do you value? If you value something, most probably you'll be willing to pay a little bit more for it. It's true, right? If you guys actually realized, a lot of people make this comment saying, hey, why did you spend a hundred over dollars on a spinner that only spins three minutes? I got a five dollar spinner that spins for like seven minutes. And for a person like me who doesn't really care about spin times, then it doesn't even bother me at all. I don't give a shit if your spinner costs you five bucks and spins for like 10 minutes. So really don't be phased too much by that. A lot of time I feel like people factor in the wrong reasons into a spinner purchase. For example, say customer experience. Okay, you guys know my friend Adrian from Australia. Adrian admitted before that he loves his Maelstroms because he thinks that Rich is a great guy, Rich from Flyway Toys. So he did admit that it's, he's probably kind of biased in a way. Like for me, I try to take myself out of the customer experience and I try to look at a spinner for what it is. For example, a lot of people somehow think that I'm selling the Hyperstone or I'm a part of the Hyperstone team. I'm not, I just like the Hyperstone for what it is. And yes, I do speak a lot to Zhang or how I learned to say his name is Zhang. I speak a lot to Zhang, but he's not really a friend of mine. You know, I only communicate with him on Facebook and I ask him questions only related to the spinners he's selling. And you know me, I, I say things for what it is. If it sucks, it sucks. I don't care who you are. For example, I would like to think that I'm on pretty good terms with Joshua Young of Spinetic Spinners, but I've also done a review, a very fair review of the X and Y spinners and I said that it's just too damn sharp or for example the dapper and I said that it's too damn sharp you know so I'm just being honest and I hope that people can try to understand that customer service is part of the experience but should not be a deciding factor on whether or not you want to buy a certain particular spinner because people do have on and off days. One of these examples of the other factors that I'm talking about is for example popularity of a spinner or hype of a spinner. It could be due to peer pressure, it could be due to what you see every day. Like for example, right now spinners are blowing up and you know you have to understand that you know it's typical kids behavior where as a kid you go to school and then you see two of your friends have spinners and you think that it's cool then you go home and you tell your mom and dad hey i want a spinner too just because your friends have it and then the friends of your friends also see you having it and then they want spinners as well and everyone wants a spinner just for the sake of having a spinner that is kind of like popularity that is kind of hype there are some spinners out there that people just want to buy simply because everyone else is talking about it or simply because it looks good or because the build up of all these pre-sales and everything like sneak pictures and everything all just wow 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 everyone's going wow this is really good wow this looks so good wow you know i can't wait to see the actual product and then you slowly get sucked into wanting to buy that spinner simply because you will think about whether or not you will regret if you don't buy the spinner you know what i'm trying to say so hopefully you don't mix it up and just look at the spinner for what it is you know, pay attention to the things that you actually are looking for in a spinner and whether or not it suits your needs. And that really is something that I want to point out because at the same time, you notice a lot of people suddenly jumping into this whole spinner movement and then 
not just buying one but buying a few and then one month later they regret and they say oh my god i spent too much money i want to start selling my spinners and you realize that the value of each spinner has dropped you know so don't do that guys just understand what you're looking for know yourself and ask yourself these questions hopefully help you identify which spinner you want to get some of you out there just want one spinner and it could be that one spinner is all you need for me i can't tell you if one spinner is all i need but i can tell you this i really like all of these guys what i don't like that i bought so far i have already sold and i was able to identify all these the moment i received it a lot of the time when you first start getting into spinners you need to kind of have the spinner in your hand in order to kind of understand a lot of these things that people are talking about before you actually really know and are able to identify so hopefully without having to actually spend money by watching this video it will help you form a better understanding of what you're getting into before you actually put down money for it that is actually the goal of this video and i hope that helps you out now to end this video let's talk about the resources you guys have watched all the way through and you've gotten to this point and you realize that i haven't even spoken about where in the world do you find all these spinners where in the world do you uncover new spinners where in the world are you getting information on new spinner design releases updates etc facebook and join various spinner groups for example spin space spin scene and just recently i've joined and have been approved into spin city fidget hq so you have a lot of different resources in Facebook where you can discuss about spinners you can find out about what's the newest spinner that's going to be released some makers actually post the prototypes there as well so just get on there you don't even have to post anything just pay attention and read the posts as they come along and you'll find out what the new upcoming spinners as well at the same time you could also probably find some good sales there for people who are selling spinners that are maybe for example out of stock or no longer in production anymore that's where you can also find an alternative way to procure some spinners that you're looking for. And last but not least, of course, get onto YouTube and watch review videos. Of course, if you like my review videos, then please watch mine. I, I know I don't really ask for subs, but if you're interested, then sub to the channel because you know that a lot more reviews are coming up and I take a more, I guess, a more critical sort of approach to spinners where i actually talk about good and bad points and i really just i don't care who you are i don't care if you're a friend of mine i don't care where you're from you know as long as you sell a spinner and i buy it i'm going to give you my honest opinion on it and i just want to say this the reason why i don't really have a lot of spinners for review and the reason why i'm not able to fulfill the requests of my viewers to review certain spinners is because all these spinners that i have with the exception of the occasional loaned spinner or the sand blasted x and the stainless steel hyperstone which were gifts from the makers everything else i've bought with my own heart and money and i don't ask for dips i don't reach out to makers and say hey send me a prototype or send me something so i could review for you partly because i'm far away in asia i come from singapore that's why my channel name is called the average singaporean but a lot of these makers are based in the us so for them to ship over to me not only is it going to be costly it would also take time probably a week or two and so in order for me to get a spinner i would have to purchase it off the site when they release it or join the pre-order queue so that's why i'm not able to review every spinner that you guys request for i review spinners that i think is nice and i want to buy i hope you understand that but of course besides my channel check out spin spaces official youtube channel run by fabian botero i think it's a really wonderful channel because fabian goes into crazy details like for example weight distribution um you know things that could be improved and at the same time there are makers that send him prototypes of their spinners asking him for advice and he would put the advice into a video and share it with you guys you know so it's it's really quite cool I, I i like what he's doing also another shout out to fidget haven reviews elena is doing some really wonderful reviews and she does cover a lot of aspects about spinners that i don't as well including weight of the spinner and she also speaks a lot to the makers as well so i think that's really cool she does a lot of reviews on unique spinners like the real gear spinners and things like that so yeah make sure to check out her channel and then for overviews you could consider watching speedy tech because he does a lot of good product overviews he buys most of his spinners that he actually talks about he tells you about the spinners what you can look out for what are the unique points of the spinners things like that so make sure you check that out if you want a product overview but like i said again reviews or product overviews whether it's on my channel or any other channel you still need to wait for the spinner to actually be available it is very rare for you to get a sneak peek on that channel because not many makers are willing to send their prototypes out due to a lot of factors for example clones uh, you know people make clones and stuff like that so make sure you get on facebook 
get onto spinnerlist.com. That is where you'll be able to get the latest news on the upcoming spinners. Last thing I want to say is generally, if a YouTube channel does reviews or overviews, but it's also selling spinners, then it's very difficult to trust them. I mean, let's be logical about this. Who would not say good things about their own products, right? So just be careful. Make sure you pick and choose your resources correctly. But I've already given you, I think, quite a lot of good resources already. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way throughout. And I hope that this video gave you enough information to guide you along, to help you decide on your first spinner purchase or your next spinner purchase. Those are things that I look out for on a spinner. And really, let's just end this video by saying, once again, what do you value? Right? A lot of us choose spinners based on the way it looks because it looks cool. But then bear in mind that a lot of people do that and regret the purchases once they receive it because it's not everything that they really kind of want. They don't find it fun to flick around, things like that. So don't make that mistake as well. Money is hard to come by, money is hard to earn, and that's it. I'm gonna finally plug myself this time. If you like what you see and if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to my channel. And when you do, make sure you click the bell button so that you'll be alerted with notifications whenever I put out a new video. I don't know how long more I'm gonna do spinner reviews. I guess it's for as long as I enjoy them because my channel is not meant to be a spinner review channel. It is just meant to be my whatever goes channel. Uh, I do run a couple more channels, but this channel is mainly focused on things like my lifestyle, my vlogs, and uh, the occasional random stuff. So yeah. All right. Bye everyone.